introducing our first speaker. Um, I thought it'd be uh, appropriate to reflect for a moment on why they are here. Why should we try to keep heritage alive? Heritage is so much more than nostalgia. It stems from the wisdom accumulated by generations of the observation and trial and error. Heritage is the glue that enable communities to stay together and survive long enough for culture to develop. In most societies throughout history, the elders were the respected guardians of this accumulated wisdom. When Barnabas was being built, this vital information was still passed on from one generation to the next through storytelling and example. By the time a young fisherman acquired his own boat, he would already know the hazards, the marks which indicated the best fishing grounds or the state of the tide. Most likely, he would see himself in the context of those who had gone before and would have a strong sense of identity and, despite the direct competition for livelihood, would know he could find a helping hand or advice in a crisis. But what changes Barnabas has seen? Very few of us these days end up doing the same job as our parents or living in the same community. In our haste to absorb the new, we have effectively thrown away knowledge vital for survival, which has taken thousands of years to acquire, and which, quite conceivably, we may yet need. The wisdom of the elders has become almost irrelevant, as most now prefer to seek advice from Google than from a person. The internet has given us all a sense of independence, which further undermines the role of community the breakdown of which is increasingly blamed for many of our social problems today. Whatever the drivers of change were, they generated a sense of loss, which was keenly felt by some in West Cornwall. In 1920, my grandfather, Robert Morton Nance, set up the first Old Cornwall Society here in St Dives to gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost, and establish the St Dives Museum, Today, museums are all we have to replace the stories of our elders. So it's there that we should look for our lost sense of identity and community. For just as heritage kept former communities together, today it has the potential to restore them. However, although museums hold the key evidence and artefacts, they cannot be expected to retain any understanding of them. Tonight, we are here to celebrate the extraordinary survival of Barnabas and the Cornish Maritime Trust, who sail and maintain her. Barnabas, after all, is a seagoing museum piece. By taking a museum piece, or a faithful replica like the Jumbo, and putting it back to work, albeit for leisure purposes, we can rediscover some of this lost understanding. We get answers to questions we never thought of asking. Organisations such as the Cornish Maritime Trust and the Jumbo Association <laughs> therefore perform a vital role as extensions to the museums. In working these boats, heritage is brought back to life in an engaging and dynamic way to suit today's lifestyles. And the best bit, it brings with it a growing sense of community. Thank you. Story into local context, I'd like to welcome former mayor William Thomas to tell us about the Barnabas and the Thomas family. It's a privilege to be a part of the Thomas family, and there are a number of around with us here uh, this evening. Uh, over there um, is the great great grandson of Barnabas Thomas. Gentlemen over there is the great grandson of Barnabas Thomas, who um, all his days of growing up lived in the house which Barney, Barnabas Thomas uh, owned and purchased in Carn Crow Street. So um, they'll have a little plaque over that. Yeah. I can only really recollect what my grandfather had, uh, had told me. Um, so there will be others here perhaps have different memories. 
my grandfather um, is actually photo is, is in the painting there opposite uh, as you go up on the hallway. My grandfather is the one with a sou'wester straight down and, and a moustache. So I thought I would look like <laughs> trying to look like him tonight, but I haven't got my sou'wester on. He had a boat built, um, which was a sister uh, ship to the Barnabas. It's called the Silas, uh, and um, his father, Bill, one of the uh, family. There were uh, 18 children in the family. Uh, 11 of them were men, and at one time there were 11 boats in our family. The largest boat in, in the family was the young John. He was the largest boat in the harbour at that time, uh, and the fastest, they tell me. It is said, uh, someone has said there were over a thousand boats in the harbour at one time. Um, I think that's rather optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly uh, there were uh, over a hundred sailing boats in the harbour, and my parents can remember walking from the quay across to the wharf uh, without getting their feet wet crossing uh, over on the boats. The Silas, like the Barnabas, was built by um, Henry Chaborrow in the, the workshop there at the top of Fourth Wind. Um, and imagine, if you would, uh, launching that size of boat down the hill at Fourth Wooden. It's quite a feat in itself. Um, and um, it's interesting because uh, the Silas's punt, which um, I used to scully as, as a boy and fish with my father, was the inspiration really, I think, uh, for the Jumbo Association. Uh, Johnny's yeah. father took the measurements of our punt uh, to put in the Greenwich Maritime Museum. Johnny took those measurements and built the replica punt. And from that, um, obviously a couple more, and the jumbos. And, and so we are pleased, as I think, the Thomas family to have, have a part in the uh, inauguration, if you like, of the, the Jumbo Association. I, if I may just interject there, um, it's absolutely true what you say. It was the result of um, the launch day on the fair mode that Bill Brian Stevens organised. Um, the turnout made me realise that um, boat building had a social relevance in bringing these people together. And I thought, well, how better it would be if we built a boat that we could use because of I mean, this, a punt is a big, heavy boat, and there's not a lot you can do with it, which, uh, uh, and so it, it could be done. So we built first Jumbo, um, and suddenly the punt had a new role. It was used as they always had been. So we get the full crew out in one go. Um, and so yes, you're absolutely right. It all stemmed from the sinus. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Certainly, um, times were, were hard in those days. My grandfather was taken out of the school at the age of 11 uh, to go to fish in the North Sea because there was a cruise short. He spent his, spent his 12th birthday in the North Sea. Um, he tells the story of uh, when they went across uh, to Ireland. Uh, as you probably know, the, uh, the Barnabas uh, was initially a pilgrim driver, uh, what they call a second glass class boat. And you may see photographs of the numbers with uh, her, her numbers followed by the letters SS behind. She later became a first class boat, but she went macro drifting, and so she became SS. Um, and uh, they went across, they used to go across at the end of the season to take some fish across to Ireland. As we said, times were hard, they, they were poor. Uh, when no one was, was buying fish, they would salt them away. Uh, salt them away, they'd take them across to Ireland, and then they were, uh, my grandfather told me that he would hire a wheelbarrow, and they would wheel these herring, salt herring, around to the various farms, and. and and the people over in Ireland didn't have any more money than, than them, and they would barter for uh, potatoes and such like. On one occasion, he told me they, they bought 11 geese, live geese, on, uh, for Christmas for each of the family. 
um, there was, uh, of course, they used to do the baking then in the bakehouses, and there was a bakehouse in St. Peter Street called Raddy's, and uh, they took the geese in there to cook. And uh, Raddy came running in one day and said, Have you got any more pots, Mrs. Thomas? I said, oh, pots? Yeah, get as many pots as you can. So he took some more pots across. And come to find out, they had about six or seven pots of goose fat and a goose as, as, as big as a parrot. You know, as a, as a, <laughs> they obviously fed them well in, in, in Ireland. Spent two weeks in the bar at Wexford, not, 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 the, not the pub bar, <laughs> um, in the sand bar, right? because they couldn't cross it, the weather was too poor, and they had the lifeboat come out to bring them fresh water. One of the boats, uh, when she came in over the bar, um, took off on a sea, uh, the fish ran forward, the bulkhead broke, and she ploughed under um, and was lost. The crew came home dressed in women's clothes. Um, so, you know, that, that was the, the day and age that they were in. But they shared, they shared everything. Um, and if a boat lost its gear, uh, through the storm, or was, or was washed away, then the other boats would go to their loss and take out a net, and, and so that they would enable the other boat to carry on fishing. Uh, that's what it's like in our community when we grew up. Down along was, was full of houses. No one locked the doors, they didn't need to. Half of them were related to each other anyway. <laughs> So it, it was, yeah, it was indeed a, a tough time uh, for them all. Now, um, I, I'm rather loath to do, to say this, because I, I know I'm going to um, cause some consternation, perhaps amongst the family. Uh, it is said that the Barnabas registration number was taken from the Methodist hymn book. And uh, the, the particular uh, hymn was Will Your Anchor Hold? A very appropriate uh, hymn for this uh, Christian family. I, 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 I've often considered that and I thought it's unlikely being a, a brethren family at that time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that they would have taken a Methodist <laughs> hymn. Wrong. <laughs> But, but, yeah. <laughs> they, they were still Methodists at that time. But, but, they didn't but, break away with brethren until after that. I, I'm, I'm glad Stephen's saying this because I, I, he's the one I don't want to upset. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you ask Andy, that come from my mother, and my mother yep, said, that's that's all that's 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 You see, the Barnabas was launched in what, 18... 1881. The, um, the hymn wasn't written until 1885. Oh, and the Methodist hymn wasn't published until uh, 1933. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm just sorry as, as, as anybody, because I thought it, it sounded really good, but unfortunately, um, well, that, that, that's, that's the way it goes. <laughs> but um, there are, as I said, um, Stephen and David, they've got some copies of the family tree the Barn from Barnabas. If you were sure you, they'd be willing to, to share it, have a, a look at it. The Thomas family had its own markings, of course. Um, all the folks looked more, more or less the same, but when they were, uh, when they were coming, they had uh, markings on their top mast. The, the um, Thomas family was red and white hoops, um, as you probably noticed from the, the Barney, uh, as it is at present. I hope that's uh, given you a little bit of a flavour uh, of what um, <coughs> what life was like back in um, the 1800s, uh, where people relied on everything which come, came in over the bow of the boat. People today talk of poverty. Um, I guess everybody in those days would, certainly by today's standards, lived in abject poverty. But they cared for each other, and they shared with each other. And it was a sense of community that I don't think Sinai will ever see again. Um, and, but, so we are grateful to the Maritime Trust.
um, for maintaining the, the barley, as we, we, would, we used to call her. And, of course, to St Ives Town Council for their generous donation in enabling this uh, piece of equipment, which enables the boat to steer, <laughs> <laughs> which is a very important piece of equipment. So, thank you, John, and thank you, Council. Yeah. You said about poverty, there were days where the, they couldn't get the free, wouldn't have gone out for weeks, days, maybe weeks on end. And my mother would tell the story that some of them, they were lucky if they had a pot of tea on the table. That's, that was what the poverty was like. And she can remember talking to you know her generation and the one before. That's what their poverty. And the other one, what William said about the bar in Wexford. Uh, I've heard one or two other stories because they were all Christian fishermen and they would never ever have a drink home here, but when they went to Ireland... <laughs> I, heard, I, heard, I heard mentioning any names, but there was a relative of mine and it wasn't on the Barnabas side that he had to be carried back to the... <laughs> and the crew were sworn, you don't go home and tell my wife. <laughs> But no. as William said, they had to, and, and there's another one, I don't know if everybody knew it, because they did her, um, when they took the Barnabas recently around the coast. I mean, they yeah. sailed from here up to Scotland, go up through the Caledonian Canal so that they didn't have to go up around the very top of the thing, following the fish, and then come all the way down the east coast and come back down again, all, all on sail. And that's what they had to do for a living. You know, and then the families are, what do you say, the families are on, am I ever going to see them, am I ever going to see them again? You know, there was no telephones in that day that they could phone anybody or... And my, um, uh, Barnabas, his daughter, who was my, my granny, um, she went to America in the early 1900s uh, because of the fish collapse. Um, she was obviously engaged to my grandfather, Richard Park Bar Barrowman. Um, he went out there with his two brothers, because there was no fish, worked in the mines. And then Granny went out in oh, 1909 or 1911 uh, to join him, got married, had the four children over there. Barnabas's wife died in 1925 and had never seen the grandchildren, never even seen a photo of her grandchildren. And they came home in 1925 because Barnabas wrote and said to my granny, saying, look, I'm sorry, but your mother has died, and I would like to see the grandchildren before I die. Oh. So that's why they came back in 1925, because he'd never, he'd never seen the grandchildren. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if ever they, I actually have in the photograph, and the album I've got there, they, my granny, great granny, actually sent him a, uh, which would be Barnabas' wife, sent him a photo, sent a photograph of my grandfather on the fishing boat. And it arrived in America within, I think it was seven days or something. And this is like 1911, 1909, 1900, whatever the date is. But sometimes it would take six weeks for a letter to arrive, and then six weeks for it to get back again. And after the first grandson, when the grandson was born, my uncle was born, and my granny obviously wrote home to Barnabas and um, his wife and said, I'm expecting. And she was panicking so much that when after that, my granny would say to all her friends over there, because they got other son, people from St. Eyes, people from Newley, she would write home, see them and say, look, I'm expecting, don't you dare write a letter home and tell her that I'm expecting again, because then she'll only worry. So by the time the next grandchild was born, it could have been six or eight weeks old before they got Barnabas and his wife got the, the news home here that they had a grandchild. And then by the time they got a letter back, they said, what, what's it called? Well, the child, the child is almost walking. <laughs> but, but, that, but that's what they went through. I mean, if, if you can imagine nowadays, I mean, you see now, they, they say unemployment and everything else. They might grandfather and his two brothers, their mother said, you've saved up enough money, the fishing is dying off, get on that boat or on that ship and go to America. Now they won't even go five miles down the road to get a job to work. But that's, as William said, that's what they were growing up with. He's saying about the boats in the harbour, how many fishing boats did they used to have on Pumpins to Beach? Same boats. 
The same post is on fourth Minster Beach. You wouldn't have gone down there swimming because there's no room for anybody to, to walk down. There was that many people on that place. One thing is important to our heritage and history. People have got to tell their children and their grandchildren. Because my granny, my, my grandfather, I could, can't remember my grandfather on my mother's side. And but the granny, they never talked about the hard times. They, ne they never told you what it was. So now it's in, so it's only what my mother had learned and then passed on to me. So now it's important for people to tell their children and their grandchildren about their history and what, you know. Because That's right. right. Otherwise it will disappear. Mm -hmm. Drag them off the computer and tell them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody else have any uh, appropriate sort of anecdotes before we proceed? Because that was lovely, thank you very much. Well, that's, that's, that's one generation later than me, so perfectly yeah, well. No, yes. um, what was William said about the, uh, the hymn number relating to the rag the hole and the storms of life. My brother's got Barnabas's hymn book, and I had a look at it to see if it related to that. And I thought, well, it must be the Barnabas afterwards, because it's not that hymn in his hymn book. But I have to check now, because I dismissed that as being not Barnabas's to own the boats hymn book, but his one down after it was also called Barnabas Thomas, popularly. Um, so I'll check on that now, because Channel the other day it was pretty it could you. be right, and it may not be your alcohols in the storms of life. <laughs> so sorry about that. <laughs> well now then, I'd like to uh, invite up our Deputy Mayor Johnny Wells and the Barnabas crew to, uh, to do this presentation. Just going to say, um, it's a, it is a privilege really um, to be part of this and, and you know, it's vitally important, as everyone said, that we keep heritage alive and, it's, you know, that's 140 years gone, let's hope, you know, what we do now carries it on going for another 140 years and, and the stories carry on getting passed down because, you know, they're kind of funny really, aren't they, a lot of them, I, I really like all the old Cornish stories, so, um, but yeah, no, as the council, we're really proud to be part of this and it's, it's great to be um, here and, and collaborate with more and more people out in the community and, and bringing these things to life, really, which is, you know, it's really important. So, yeah, are we on? Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That mean we get one to break over. We could do that. Can I say just a couple of words for the Cornish Maritime Trust? Um, we happen to be the custodians of the boat, perhaps by accident, for the sum of um, one pound some years ago. My name's Toby, um, I'm the current master of Barnabas, um, although because I have young children I haven't done very much uh, of that uh, recently, but um, I was listening to all the things that were being said and most of them I didn't know, and I was reflecting about what I, what I do know, and um, I've uh, thought about that hymn number um, on a windy night, off St Ives, wondering if the anchor will hold. Um, also in St Ives, I remember trying to get a big everybody into a punt in the dark, <laughs> with an onshore breeze. Um, I know those things about what um, the fishermen would have um, uh, experienced and known about. And one of the things that I love about Barnabas is, what is it like to actually sail it? What is it like to put to sea? Um, that understanding of um, the, the, the life that they led is, is incomplete unless you've been on Barnabas to see. So I'd like to invite everybody, if you haven't already, to come to see on Barnabas and experience something of it. And um, whether it's a lovely day or a nasty day, you never know. Um, the, uh, the tiller is also just a wonderful metaphor. Um, you know, why is, why is it relevant to keep sailing this boat, I mean we have it, we could just keep it on the beach and look after it and not sail it, it'd be a lot less risky, um, it'd be a lot cheaper um, and uh, it'd be a lot easier. Um, sailing Barnabas is a bit like working in a lumber yard in the rain um, and uh, it isn't an easy boat to sail, you need people to sail her um, and you need uh, to work together. Um, 
And the thing about the tiller is in our modern world, um, you can look at it through different um, lenses, if you like. Um, the tiller is the direction setting. You know, where do you go? How do you steer between um, one thing and another? Um, perhaps in mental health, it's about agency, a sense of control, um, uh, being in charge of your own fortunes. And it's also about uh, having an adventure. I mean, it's just amazing amazingly good fun to go to sea in a boat with people and to get to know them and uh, on watch at night that's the thing that you will hold to keep the boat on the, on the, on the compass course and the skipper comes up and pokes his head out the hatch and says out ah, of things and uh, he goes yeah okay um. and uh, I remember I've been holding that to his predecessor for seven hours on the way to Scilly while the skipper and somebody else had an argument about where we were <laughs> Meanwhile, Silly was getting closer. <laughs> so we have had some fun. Um, uh, the, the chap who was holding that to his predecessor when it broke um, was also the chap who made a new one. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, thank you to the people of St Ives for um, uh, you know, enabling it to be to be remade. Uh, and thank you for the, all of the, the stories about the history. I, I really enjoyed that. And uh, we will go sailing again. Um, that tiller will be on the boat, and uh, it, things will go on. So, in part due to you here, and definitely the wider community that we live in. So thank you. That's about it, I think. Uh, just a footnote, um, the event that this evening uh, is, uh, was rescheduled from was Boats in the Bay uh, back in September. Um, I don't think he's here, Ben Law Lawrence, is the Harbour Master. Um, he is very keen that we should do this. Um, and I'm hoping that Barnabas, her next visit to St. Ives might be as soon as uh, early May or early part of uh, next year, where we might do a Boats in the Bay at that end of the season um, instead of uh, in September, which is when we've customarily done it. Thank you all so very much. And actually, she hasn't been mentioned yet, but Emma here. Yes. Emma. the translator and go-between, <laughs> myself and uh, the town council, and has been able to translate my intentions into their speech that they can understand, and got them on board, which is brilliant, and uh, I don't think it would have happened without you, so thank you very much.